This is about uh, Bruce Springsteen and how you make a song or really how you make anything. I was trolling around on the television the other day and I came upon an interview with Bruce Springsteen. I don't know why I stuck with it. I wasn't that interested. I saw Springsteen many years ago right after his first album caught fire and I was not impressed. I recall sappy ballads and a poor imitation of Bob Dylan. Uninspired music and scattershot lyrics. I thought the guy was not going to make it. That's how much I know. The interviewer had done his homework. He had a long list of places Springsteen played when he was starting out. VFW, Elks, churches, schools, bars, tiny clubs, any place bigger than a street corner. Springsteen, who graduated to stadiums and the largest concert halls, had a good laugh over that. That was his learning curve. He was the lead singer and songwriter and the somewhat benevolent dictator. From his view, one person was the leader and all the others pulled an oar, even the most talented musicians. The boss, the interviewer said. Springsteen had to learn how to sing, how to hit the notes and do the phrasing, but the most important thing about singing, he said, in fact it was really the whole thing, is that you have to learn how to inhabit the song. Once you could do that, he said, your problems were over. You had to inhabit the song. The song came to life when you sang it. And if the song came to life, then the audience would also come to life, and it was the singer who was creating and directing all that energy. That is why someone like Bono or Freddie Mercury was so loved and so successful. They lived in their songs. They gave the songs life and magnitude and meaning. Their performances were operatic, and they did not seem to be performing. It was more real and more true than that. They were living in their songs. I'm thinking about the idea of order at Key West again. How can you tell the dancer from the dance? You can't. When it's done right, they are one and the same. I am all for this way of thinking. I can see that the tree produces the acorn which contains everything that's needed for a future tree. So a tree makes a tree and a musician makes music, which is more or less pleasing depending on whether the musician is merely playing the song or he's gone away to live inside it. And this is also the way of writing. The writer creates a story and the story will be of interest to readers only if the writer is alive inside the story. I was reading a book about crime writers who have created a protagonist for a series of books. And this leading character has become quite real, ravishing, alive for all those writers. As one of them put it, for 20 years now he's been living inside my head, but sometimes it feels as though I'm the one living inside his. If it's good, it's all inside. There are many kinds of stories, and the one we favor is called the inside story. We expect it to be juicy and salacious and even more reliable, that is, true, and as evidence, loaded with much telling detail. They are full of the inside dope. When the journalist gets wind of a story like this, he says he's got an inside scoop. Yes, 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 it's all inside. If it's going to be any good, it's got to come from the inside. And of course something it takes, and of course sometimes it takes an outsider to see just what the hell is going on inside. But singer or writer, you've got to get inside in order to do your work. Anything else is just passing gas and a complete waste of time. But how do you get inside? And how do you know when you're there? I suspect it's mostly a feeling. If you're there in the pocket, you'll know it. I am told that when a hitter in baseball really gets a hold of one, striking the round ball squarely with the round bat, that he feels absolutely nothing at all, no shock of contact whatsoever. Maybe that isn't true, but I like to believe that it is. And that sense of feeling nothing, a pure state, is what there is when you really do get inside. Because then all your life is caught up in what you're doing, and for a while, the sense of being you is gone.